Hey guys. So in the last video I showed you some of the multiplayer networking stuff I've been working on for my first person shooter for the web. It was a really bad implementation though because it trusted the client. And basically as he moved around, it sent the server the position information for the user and it broadcasted that to everybody. So basically I could pull up the console and tell and send a packet telling the server that I'm at a specific location and the server would, would just teleport me there. That's, so that's pretty bad. The way that games solve this is that they actually run the whole world on the server and they just send the input to the server. And the server becomes an authoritative source for information. So this is all working now. And I'm going to show you this by joining it in a different browser. And you can see a little guy running around. It also transmits the rotation information, which didn't happen before. So when I appear in the screen, can actually see me look up and down and peek around. So I'm going to come up and say hi. Hello. So while the new architecture solves the hacking problem, it introduces a lot more complexity. For example, if I push forward on the client, I should move forward instantly. I shouldn't have to wait for the server to return position information. This is solved with something called client-side prediction. And it basically runs the runs the events locally, but also reconciles it with the server. So, so the server validates the position information. Um, so if I do something bad, the server will actually tell me about that, and the local game state will revert to the server state. Again, so it's still the authoritative state. But I still get this really fast local response time. There's also the difficulty of the server sending out a lot of packets. This is solved with um, the server only sending updates to each entity um, every so often, like 100 milliseconds. So you can see what's interesting is if I go over to the server and I change it to only send out information every second, you'll see something else. So now the server is sending out information only every second. It basically queues up the packets to send and compresses them all together and sends them out. So for every single entity, I'm only getting one packet one per one second instead of several packets for several entities. I'm going to turn on God mode so that you can see this a little bit better. Now what's interesting about this is that the AI is actually running in a circle, but you can see it's very staggered. There's um. And it's because every single second it receives new information and it's moving it to that position. But it's still smooth. It's still smooth locally. That's the important part. This is called entity interpolation. As I receive packets, I interpolate it from the last packet to the current packet locally. If I move it back to one second, or I mean 100 milliseconds, Restart the server, throw in some AI, you'll see that they're running in a smooth circle again. This is great because I can control how many packets and how much processing is going on with the network. And now they're running in a smooth circle. So this is configurable. Now the other cool thing that you can see is if I try to hack this. So say I try to set my position, just call player set pause to 000. It will change it there, but it didn't actually change on the server. So when I try to move, it actually resets my position. You see that? I'll do it again. Player set pause, zero, zero, zero. It does move it, but whenever I try to do anything, it resets it back to where I was. And that's because everything is actually happening on the server and, and it's authoritative. So this is an efficient way to run everything on the server, but still have things as smooth as possible in the client. The final thing I'll do is add a bunch of AIs just to, just to show that it's performant. 
Let's add 10. And it's just as smooth as before. I'm getting 30, 35 frame, frames per second, but the only reason why I'm not getting 60 is because of the screen recording software. Typically I get a smooth 60 frames per second. And that's my current multiplayer game. Next up, I'm going to implement headshots and shooting and all that fun stuff. Thanks for watching. Bye.